Mackie Green. Uh, I live here on Campobello, a uh, fisherman, uh, whale watch operator, and uh, and also leader of the uh, of the Campobello Whale Rescue Team. That was it was a minke whale. They're a, a small baleen whale. They get up to 35 feet long, 10 ton or so. Well, it was it was a small whale, about 10 feet long, so definitely this year's calf, uh, and appeared to be anchored to the bottom. It wasn't moving very far and stayed in, in the position. And seemed to be pretty labored coming up to the surface. He would he was bringing his head up on a really sharp angle. Uh, he had the rope through his mouth, so I think he was really straining to get to the surface to, to get a breath. And uh, a small whale like that just wouldn't have the stand, stamina to last the night. So we were real lucky that uh, that, that whale watch boat spotted that whale and, and reported it so we could get up there and do something. So, uh, we were there, we sort of surveyed for a minute, we made a couple circles, the whale seemed to be not going very far. He was trying to stay close to the surface so we could see the whale under the water most of the time. And uh, so we could see the rope coming out of his mouth and once we were, we were pretty sure where the rope was coming and where we were making the cut, we were able to go right in and uh, and because like I said, we could see the whale the whole time. So we were able to go right up beside him and, uh, and they reached down and got the rope. Unfortunately, it was a really big, heavy rope. So uh, it was really hard to cut. It took two guys to, uh, on the knife and uh, when they pulled the, on, with the knife to cut the rope, it actually rolled the whale on its side and hauled it up towards the boat. I could feel the strain on the boat roll down, and like I say, this, you know, with a baby whale, but it's, uh, yeah, it was pretty amazing. After we freed it, he, uh, he took right off. You could see the footprints, we call them, but it's the weight coming off his tail. And you could just see footprint after footprint leading right offshore into the fog. So, so the size of that whale, it was probably still nursing or just getting done nursing, so probably taking off to try to go find his mother, or maybe hopefully his mother wasn't too far away, sort of hanging around waiting to see what was going on. So, so thankfully, uh, like I say, um, we got the boat from DFO and we get our funding from IFA for, for you know, to run to, to buy our equipment and, and all our maintenance and operational costs. So that's, we've been lucky that, uh, that we've had that to be able to keep going. Well, it's... It's just something that really needs to be done. I go whale watching, uh, I've grown up on the island here, I, I go fishing, I've fished all my life, and, and just trying to be a good steward of the ocean. I think that's the way most people are around here. Uh, fishermen get a bad rap sometimes for not taking care of the environment, but, but uh, they, they really do, you know, a lot, of, a lot of fishermen care. And I think that's where it comes from. Uh, I also run a whale watch business here on the island, so, so after watching the whales for a few years, and uh, you know, you see how amazing a creature they are, and, know how important they are to, to have them around and how smart and intelligent they are that's a big thing you know so you can't it's not like something you know it's suffering when it's tangled up you know they're that intelligent so you, you feel really bad so you gotta go out and try to do something